Okay, so let's go ahead and get started creating some of the styling on this app. And we'll just style it up a little bit so that it's a little bit nicer to work with as we develop the various components. So what I'm gonna do is just head into the index.html page. And first of all, we should just go ahead and minimize everything that we have in node modules. And then, so within our source directory, and if we scroll down to styles.css, and what I'm gonna do is just make this a little bit larger for now, okay. So you can see we have a message that this is where we add our global style. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And we're gonna set everything up on the page with box sizing, which is something I like to do um, more or less for all of the applications that I design. We will be leveraging Bootstrap as well as some custom styling that we'll be doing. But we won't be doing anything very complicated in terms of CSS, really just creating class and ID selectors, and then applying some very basic styling to them. But Bootstrap will actually be doing most of the heavy lifting, if you will. So I'm gonna apply a sort of blue color for the links. And then just a little bit of a brighter blue for links that are hovered over. And we won't strictly be doing like material design in this app, but I am going to apply a little bit of a box shadow on several elements to give it a little bit of a material feel, um, but really all the styling we'll be doing is quite basic. Nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and define a shadow CSS class here. And this is just gonna be used to apply a simple box shadow. All right, and I'm just gonna move this so that we can see the screen a little bit better. And in fact, I may also make my font size a little bit larger. Okay, so we'll just bump this up maybe to size 22. Okay. And I'm gonna apply one more style for now, which we'll call section container. and just apply 30 pixels of padding to this container. And now also I would like to apply some styling to the body element. So we'll give it a dark background color. And a light default font color. And I'd also like to use a particular Google font throughout the application. So we'll just define that in the body tag here. And then we'll need to import the font just using Google Fonts CDN. And the font I'll be using is Source Sounds Pro. And just to be sure that this font can be used wherever the application is served, we'll go ahead and grab the link to the CDN from Google Fonts. So over at fonts.google.com, I'm just gonna go ahead and search for Source Sans Pro. And if we click the plus sign here, and then we'll go ahead and copy the link from the embed section. So we'll go ahead and copy this. And then we just need to paste this in the head of the index page on our app. So if we head over into index.html, then up here in the head, what we can do is just go ahead and paste it here. So I'll save that, and then the page should refresh. And if you didn't have this font available on your system, then you should see the font change here. Of course, you could select another font for your application as well. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our app.component.css file. So if we head into the app directory and then in the root here of the app directory, we have this app.component.css. 
And here I'm going to have an ID for the sidebar, as well as one that we'll call it dashboard. And I'm going to go ahead and create a class navbar selector. So the sidebar height will have 100 VH. This is going to allow us to size it relative to the actual viewport. I'm going to supply some padding on the top of 80 pixels. We'll give it a fixed position. This way we can, we'll actually be able to scroll other parts of the app without having the sidebar move. And then the background color here, we are going to make quite dark. Okay, for the dashboard ID here, we'll have a margin top of 60 pixels. And then for the navbar class, we'll have a background color, which will also be quite dark here. And I'm going to apply a specific box shadow to the navbar. Okay, cool. So now if we actually head back to our app component.html, let's go ahead and apply that navbar class to our navbar. And we'll also apply some typical bootstrap styling here as well. So that's looking pretty good. And actually what I want to do is rather than have our class navbar, which is um, you know, actually used by Bootstrap, we'll have an ID of navbar. Um, and then if we head back into our app component CSS, I'm going to go ahead and make this an ID selector. And we'll set the background color with uh, important here. Okay, so that's going to overwrite the default uh, bootstrap color that we had here. And if we take a look at our page, we can see that we have a nice kind of dark nav bar at the top of the screen here with a little bit of drop shadow under it. We're currently hiding the message that's coming from the sidebar, but we'll fix that in just a moment here. Okay, so back in our app component.html, our sidebar, we'll go ahead and give this uh, its ID as well. And actually I had a capital B here. And we'll apply some more bootstrap classes here as well. Okay, just to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to go ahead and put these attributes on separate lines here. And I'll do the same for the nav bar. So we've got a nav bar at the top of the page. We'll have a container div, which will contain a row that will contain our sidebar as well as um, where the main content will go. And we're going to have something called the router outlet injected here. And we'll take a look at that here in a little while when we actually start developing the components um, that will be linked to our router outlet. Oops, and actually we're going to go ahead and remove BG Lite from the, the sidebar. Um, so let's take a look at the way the page is looking now. If we refresh, we can see that we have sidebar works and placeholder for the content. This will get moved in a moment here um, into the central area of the application. Let's quickly finish out the nav bar first. So I'll move into the navbar component and then into the navbar component.html file. So what I want to do here is basically just have a, our logo as a clickable element that we can click to basically go back to the home page. And rather than have an image, we're just going to style the logo with 
um, some CSS. So we'll have our link with class navbar brand, and the href will just make a, a placeholder here. And then we'll have two spans that will contain either side of our app title. Okay, so we'll have logo left and logo right. So now in our navbar component CSS, we have our logo class with a white font color, font weight of bold. And a font size of 1.4 EM. And for logo left, we'll have a background color, a sort of reddish type color. with some padding here. So in order here, this will be the top, right, bottom, and left padding values. And then we'll apply a border radius of four pixels. And okay, so you can see here, we're getting kind of a nice rounded box effect. Now I'm just gonna copy this so that we can make a logo right. I won't have any background color and we'll slightly adjust the padding here. To kind of scoot it closer to the logo left. And we can do that even more so with uh, some negative margin on the left side of this div. And so that'll be our basic logo. Okay, so now let's take a look at our sidebar. So if we head over into our sidebar component.html, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the placeholder text here. And our sidebar will basically just consist of an unordered list of links um, that will provide the various areas of the application that we can visit. So our list elements will have a class of nav item. And our UL elements will have a class of nav, nav pills, flex column. Okay, so the first link that we'll have here will be of class nav link. And we'll call the first one sales volume. And we'll have two more here. We'll have a link to latest orders. And system health. Now we haven't talked about routing yet and we'll be using something called router link to specify the URL that we'd like to visit here. For the time being, I'm just gonna provide an empty href and we'll do the same for the other links as well. Okay, so if we take a look at our page, we can see that we still have uh, some content to align to the rest of the, the application here, but we have um, links to the various areas in the app that we'll visit later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand this a little bit here. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this placeholder text content goes here. That exists in our app component.html. Okay, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick commit. So we can see that we created, or modified rather, our app component, navbar component, and sidebar component, as well as did some styling here. If you recall earlier, we also edited the Angular CLI JSON file to incorporate some of the JavaScript. So we're a bit past due on a commit here.
and I'll go ahead and make a push. Okay, in the next video, we're going to set up the routing for our application.